Hey, good, good afternoon. I was about to say morning. Hey, today I thought we might go over who was Melchizedek, and you can look him up for yourself. But let's let's talk about who was Melchizedek. Who was this mysterious Melchizedek mentioned only a few times in the Bible? Surprisingly, his name is more of a title than a personal reference. It comes from two Hebrew words, Melek and Tezedek. T-S-E-D-E-Q. The word Melek means king and Tezedek means righteousness. Because a, because a king is preeminent in his jurisdiction, he had to be preeminent in righteousness. Um, before reviewing our first scriptural reference, note that this priest in the book of Genesis chapter 14 was the king of Salem, which means peace. This makes Melchizedek the king of peace. And you'll see well, as we start talking in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 2. And Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. First, the name Melchizedek means king of righteousness. Then also, king of Salem means king of peace. The first scripture referring to this priest is, the, is in the book of Genesis chapter 14, in the middle of the chapter. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God most high. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. Notice he said, Abram. Genesis 14, 16 through 18 reads as follows. He recovered all the goods and brought back his relative Lot and his possessions, together with the women and the other people. After Abram returned from defeating Kedolomer and the kings allied with him, the king of Sodom came out to meet him in the valley of Sheba, that is the king's valley. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was a priest of God Most High. The second reference to this priest of God is in the book of Psalms. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. At Psalms 110, 1 through 4 if you want to look it up. Did Jesus say he was not good? Jesus said no one, including himself, is inherently good, righteous. Why do you call me good? No one is good except God, Matthew 19, 17. Melchizedek was the epitome of righteousness, and since no human is inherently righteous, it is evident that he could not be a plain human. If he had been human, he would have been the same as Aaron or any, anyone else, example, a sinner. As a king of righteousness, he was the image of God's spirit, Colossians 1.15 and Hebrews 1.3. Hebrews 1.3 says, The sun is the radiance of God's glory in the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. And Colossians 1.15 says, The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Malachi refers to Melchizedek indirectly when he said that the Son of Righteousness would arise with healing in his wings. And remember, he spelled son, S-U-N. And that's Malachi 4.2. Malachi did not use the term son, S-O-N, for him because that would have suggested that Jesus was in some way a son or a descendant of the priest. This would have imp implied that the one who became Jesus Christ in the flesh was someone other than the king of Salem. In Hebrews 7, the Apostle Paul makes some startling statements about this person. 
This Melchizedek was king of Salem and a priest of God Most High. He met Abram returning, and this time it's Abraham, returning from the defeat of the kings and blessed him. And Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. First, the name of Melchizedek, as we said, means righteousness. And also king of Salem means king of peace. Without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life resembling the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. There is only one priest that lasts forever. There is only one who has no genealogy, no beginning of days or end of life. He was there in the beginning, and he was there in the end, and he'll be there in the end. The Apostle Paul made some amazing statements concerning this priest because he was emphasizing his deity. The one who became Jesus Christ is the father of all except for one human life, his own. The Most High God is the father of Jesus Christ. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. Luke 1, verse 32. Paul, however, does not state that God was the father of Melchizedek. He is clearly saying that he, like the Most High God, was without parents. Neither of them had beginning of days nor end of life. The two of them had always lived, and there had never been a time that each of them had not lived. Jesus was willing to relinquish his immortality in John 10.18, so that he could, he could become not only the king of righteousness, but also the lamb of God. Jesus succinctly put it this way. Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. And that's John 8, chapter, verse 58. Jesus' human conception was the fulfillment of prophecy from Psalm 2-7. Also Hebrews 1-5 speaks on this. Because the Son promoted God's righteousness and hated iniquity, God said to him, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter, which is a symbol of your kingdom. Hebrews 1, 8 through 9. The man who had been king of righteousness became the Son of God in the fulfillment of the scepter promise of Genesis chapter 49, verse 10. Every priest taken from among men is ordained to serve on behalf of men in things pertaining to God, so that he may offer gifts and sacrifices for sin. No one takes the honor to himself. God must call him as he did Aaron, if you read Hebrews 5, 1 through 4, 1 and 4. Christ did not glorify himself to be made a high priest, but it was said to him, You are my son. The day I have begotten you, as he also says in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews 5, 5 through 6. The person who Abraham met served as the priest of the Most High God. There cannot be two high priests, both holding the same office. Jesus must have been the person who met Abraham, since the only interaction between God and man has been through Jesus. Because he had loved righteousness and hated iniquity, God made him a son and anointed him with the oil of gladness above his brethren. You loved righteousness and you hated lawlessness. Because of this, God, even your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your companions. Hebrews 1.9 The word translated anointed is the Greek cryo which refers to contact between the one anointed and the one doing the anointing. The anointing of Jesus in Luke 3.22, it occurred when the Holy Spirit, the one who fathered Jesus, Luke 1.35, descended upon him in a bottle, bodily shape like a dove. It was at this anointing that he became the author of salvation to who all obey him. Being called of God as a high priest, Hebrews 5, 9 through 10. Jesus Christ became God's high priest because perfection and salvation were not, and I repeat, were not attainable through the Levitical priesthood. 
Hebrews chapter 7, verse 11. And I, I repeat, none of their sacrifices, there was nothing they could do that they didn't have to keep continuing to do. And it still was not enough. Jesus only had to do it one time, and that was it. Christ was made a priest forever by an oath of the Most High God in Hebrews 7, 20 through 21. His righteousness is the one manifested in the true saints of God, Romans 8 and 4. The church shares in the priesthood of Christ, and the resurrected saints will, like him, forever be kings and priests, Revelations 5.10. Revelation 5.10. Jesus Christ is the one and only Melchizedek, the king of peace and righteousness. Look up Melchizedek. Read, read this for yourself. Find out who Melchizedek was. Everybody thinks that Jesus was only here once. Jesus was here in the beginning. Jesus will be here in the end. Jesus had been here before in other forms, and we just didn't know who he was. But it tells you, no one has seen the Father. The Lord wouldn't even let us see it because we would have made the mistake of trying to make graven images unto him. So take the time to look up Melchizedek and, and do some reading in your Bible and some studying. It is an awesome, awesome feeling to learn about God and know what he has planned for you and what he needs you to do. Be blessed because you serve the best. Amen.